thank you to everyone joining me here this evening. I'm here at San Bruno City Hall to have the State of the City Address here this evening for April 28, 2022. What we're going to do this evening is we're going to have introduction. We're going to have what is the state of the city, some highlights and topics that are important to folks, and I'm going to have some closing comments. As you know, we go back in history. We used to do a state of the city, which was together. Long ago, it used to be at Skyline College at a installation with chamber officers. But what we're doing now is in light of COVID, we still thought it was the wise and best thing to do to go ahead and have it here um, virtual as we've gotten accustomed to over the time with COVID, uh, just for the health and safety, uh, protection of staff, yourselves, and everybody included. So with that, I want to embark upon some of the projects and things that we have up here before us. Most of us are all aware of the Recreation Aquatic Center, which is, uh, as you see pictured, is what it has looked like just as of late. Obviously, we have gone ahead and the demolishment of the recreation facility as well as the aquatics building has occurred. Um, this was something that was interesting when we had the groundbreaking because it meant so much to so many people, had such history for folks who had coached there, practiced, played, taken programs, classes, activities, swim lessons. I myself who worked for Parks and Recreation, that's where I worked out of that building. So we had our state of the city last time there in the gymnasium uh, where the Warriors had practiced, where Steph Curry had done a commercial before uh, we brought the building down in order for it to begin a new, and that is to have uh, us a new recreation and aquatic center. Uh, folks can go online to see the progress, to see pictures, to see how it's evolved from start to finish. And it is about every 30 minutes, and what you will see today is the see large equipment that's on the site, and now is drilling holes, having the shoring. You'll see uh, another picture of what they have been doing, and it is progressing. So now you have to do the foundation, the fundamentals, and then the building will begin. I know a lot of folks have asked uh, exactly, you know, what is the progress? What is the timeline? When is this going to be done? And that is the excitement of everybody wanting to see the first day and the opportunity. Here you have a slide that shows you the very worst work description on the left-hand side. And in the middle to the far right, you see the progression of each of the elements before and where it is anticipated is in late 2023 for completion of the facility. And that is our goal and objective, and we have been on time and on target to meet these deadlines. Also, another thing that I'm asked, which is always important to folks, how are we doing? How is the budget? And as you can see for you, it gives you that we have a $196 million overall budget. 50.9 of that is in general fund. General fund are things as our police, our fire, our library services, senior center, uh, recreation, parks, all of those things that we rely on and we want that make a better quality of life. For the city of San Bruno, we have 2.62.5 uh, full-time employee positions. With a capital improvement project, those are long-term projects for making changes and doing infrastructure to our city to keep it up of 86.5. And we have about 100 plus C CPI projects that are in the works currently. What's interesting is the folks will always say, so what does that look like going back in time? So at five years ago, we looked it up, and the operation budget at that time was $146 million, was $47 million in general fund, with $99 million in other, other funds like capital and enterprise, and it had employees of 253.75. So we've had an increase in over eight, uh, over five years of about eight positions. The city has always been very cautious and conscientious, and at times, maybe to a fault, frugal in ensuring that we balance. And as many folks do know, for all municipalities, you, we must balance the budget. It is not the federal government. We cannot go into debt. We cannot print more money. 
we are required, as we have amendments, and our last one was in February of this year, that we review the budget every uh, four times a year. Do we need to make an amendment? How are we doing? Do we need to readjust? So we are doing fine, but I know that is a question that we always get as far as the budget and are we on time, on track, and on budget. And the answer is yes, we are. And keep in mind, a city's budget is from July 1 to June 30. So when you always see it here, it say it's 21-22 uh, budget. That's the reason for that. So this budget will end, and we will be going into budget study sessions, which are open to the public to have an understanding of where enhancements are needed, what is upcoming, what projects need to be uh, completed and brought forward. Next, streets and roads. Let's all know that this is something that anybody who has been on the council or who is on the council hears about. It is something that is extremely important to many folks in this community. I mean, there are not a time that I don't hear from someone about their street. And not all streets in San Bruno are good. And yes, they are ranked and rated by the quality. A higher the number the street is, then it is in better condition. The lower, it could be a failed street. And there are streets in this community that are failed. That is a fact. Nothing is happening as to the pace of what each resident wants, but I know one of the fundamental things are, well, when is it going to be our turn? How can we get this going? And we have been doing projects. You know, when you do see approved projects for sewer lines within our community, they will then pave those streets, right? Because we've had to dig it up. We, we see that when it was down on San Mateo Avenue. Currently, there's been some paving being done on San Antonio, and there is more for that. And as you know, that has been bad. But it is not to say that we do not acknowledge, and we are aware that the city does need the help to have funds available to ensure our streets and roads are uh, good for all of our community and guests. And that's why with the Measure G that had passed, thanks to this community, um, it was to go to assist us in bringing those additional dollars that what we sometimes get from the gas tax or Measure W so that we could have a pavement management program, so we can have pedestrian safety and uh, traffic calming measures, sidewalk repair programs, um, a city uh, wildlife mitigation, and also street pole replacements. There was a time when I came out early in the council that we had said as a city, we want to make sure that we take care of the sidewalks and we must lead by example first, that the city must step forward and must say, if it's elevated and it's a street tree, we need to take care of it first. And that's why through the years you've seen those things done with the street trees so that we take care of what is our responsibility um, as we go out and try to work with homeowners for any other situation that may arise on the sidewalk repair. Keeping San Bruno clean, I think this is something that is very important to me and important to so many. As you know, in our community, and maybe it's the times we're in, as far as waste being left on a street corner, at times it's to say, hey, it's free. And we acknowledge that. Uh, there are applications and you can go online to uh, give something away if you wish as well. But, you know, after a period of time, I, I believe it's that person's responsibility. If nobody wants it for free, need to take it back and need to make sure it's disposed of correctly. And again, we can always call Recology to ask. You can go to their transfer station on Montgomery to drop off items. You can ask about what is what do they take and do they not take. You would be amazed. But what we all are also are doing is we're partnering with Recology and the city of San Bruno is working together and illegal dumping. Think of this, over 150 report, 150 from January to the middle of April of this year alone have been reported, which is important. But also we have our city staff that picks up items and we also have Recology helping us as well. In addition to that, what we are going to do is on May 14th, which is a Saturday, we're going to have a community cleanup drop off day again. We've had this and they've been very successful. It is going to be in the same location that it was last which is 975 Sneed Plain. It is only for San Bruno residents. We are, they are going to ask you for identification and it is limited to three cubic yards. It can contain items as bulky items, e-waste, appliances, and bags of garbage. What will not be accepted is dirt, rock, and concrete. But what we do ask for folks is you do see illegal dumping. We need everybody. 
to help us. And that is sambruno.ca.gov SB response. It's a mechanism that is monitored by staff and then appropriately can go out and we can assign or make sure that these items get picked up. It won't happen immediately, but it will happen. And it has been successful. And it's the same thing with gra graffiti. We have an uptick in graffiti uh, in this community, I've noticed. And that is also something that should be re uh, reported in a graffiti hotline. Because as we know, with waste, as far as trash or graffiti, it will uh, magnify and duplicate and increase if allowed to stay too long. And I can remember, we have come a long way. When I was on the Crime Prevention Committee as chair, we brought forward to the City Council the first uh, graffiti ordinance in the city of San Bruno. And that, that's evolved from three recycled paints that you would get and only people would do it sporadically. Now, there is a system in place so that, and a policy in place, so when it comes up, if it is reported and acknowledged, it can come down. So I would ask all of you to please assist us in that so that we can keep what San Bruno, which we want, which is clean uh, for us and for those that drive through our community so we all can be proud. What I've also undertaken is that there's been a lot of concerns and questions in regard to Caltrans and some of their property. Here is something that I have been going back and forth with, and what you're seeing here is a before and after shot, which just occurred this week uh, of, up at the top of uh, Sneath Lane, that there was a commitment, there was garbage that was just increasing, um, and that has been taken care of. Another site that I've heard a lot about is over I-380 to the El Camino off-ramp. That is south of Tamparan, north of Chili's. There's a, 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 an area off the off-ramp. What that took is I'm thankful to uh, State Senator Becker, who I met with regarding this, because with Caltrans, there is always that question of we don't have the resources, we don't have a contract signed. And finally, it was enough, and it was one of those moments when I had to step forward and say, this is not acceptable for our community. So even though that HAZMAT contract has not been signed still, uh, they thought outside the box to uh, finance this so that we could take care of that in San Bruno. Um, this is important, and my next endeavor will be to our BART uh, property, and that uh, is my next uh, challenge forward. But what also helps is when folks communicate and let Caltrans know or the city. So I appreciate everybody who has brought that forward. But again, that just happened this week, and I wanted to share it with all of you. Public safety. Public safety is something that's asked about quite frequently. Where are we at? How is it going? What, what is the crime? What, I, what we have been told as a council is that there are heightened levels of retail theft that has continued, especially in the areas around BART, probably because of air evasion, which I will address that as well when I speak to the board of director member. And that, as you have seen on the news, is happening around the area. Continued catalog converter thefts. Uh, and also from unlocked vehicles. So again, locking your vehicle is a huge help. Uh, there's been a significant uptick in stolen vehicles and warrant arrests. There has been a use of overdose from dangerous drugs, fentanyl, opioids, uh, to continue rise, not just here, but everywhere. Domestic-related incidents are returning to pre-pandemic levels, which is good. And there are online reporting services available for non-emergency responses. But as I, on crime prevention, we used to have a saying that if you see it, you hear it, report it. It is so critical that we be the eyes and the ears as well. That if we feel something's not right, then it is not. And it is, and I think they will tell you, they would rather have a call and be safe than sorry later. And I also just want to take a moment to thank our police and all of the personnel inside that facility uh, that work very uh, well, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, lately, it is not easy to be in law enforcement, but I will tell you, I've always been proud. As long as I've been on a committee or a commissioner board or as a former city employee or as a council member or as the mayor, I am proud of the work they do and the service they provide to the community, and I believe the community supports our police department. Wild mitigation efforts, wildfire. This has been an important factor you know, in early 2021, uh, there was a risk management assessment. The Crestmore Canyon has had significant work. You can see some of those photos from Triple C that have been out there. It was just an article in the Daily Journal about that yesterday, I believe. 
They've also, as you can see, one of the pictures about the roadway being clear. If you're a hiker and you've gone to trails in the canyon, of what it was then and what it is now is significant. And that was done in order to try to bring better awareness as far as what we need for de defensible space. Um, because let's go back to 2010 when we had the pipeline explosion. Had the winds been more severe that night, it could have gone right into the canyon and gone to the next Crestmore area. And it could have been even more devastating than it already was. And so with the chipping, with the zone haven evacuation plan, with us having a camera up in the canyon, the first municipality that had that in the city of San Bruno, and in the county of San Mateo, working with other partners, working with the county parks to try to mitigate this fire uh, concerns that we have. And this is something that always has um, been of a concern. And for me personally, and this is why your staff and mayor went forward to the federal uh, judge also and we went ahead and said hey let's take those remaining hours that were a probation for pg e and have them put into dollars that actually will make long-lasting efforts and a difference and that's exactly what you're seeing here you know as a San Bruno resident and city council member i had firsthand experience when we had that 210 explosion and the fire and what it did and the damage it caused and as a son i have firsthand experience um, from Paradise, this town of Paradise, uh, and that fire that jumped the Feather River. Um, and uh, unfortunately, my mother, mother had to flee, and we lost the house. Um, and so it has been quite something to see it all evolve. Um, but I can tell you that your staff, your council, and I as your mayor, uh, feel very passionately about trying to bring the protection to the community and understand about the vegetation is a priority. And I think we're doing more than we have in a long time to address and have a mitigation. We, you may have read about us going to district elections. Um, as you may know, there was a lot of discussion, six public meetings. There was us uh, looking at maps, having the community have involvement and engagement. What was adopted by the council was that this November, there will be two districts, district one, and District 4. District 1 is up in the corner, which is in a pinkish tone, and District 4 is in the other opposite area, which is in a bluish tone. Those two uh, uh, seats will be up, so the people in those districts will be voting for a council member. You'll see that the mayor is still on a at-large basis. It's not, he, he or she is not in a district, and so therefore that will still be on November ballot. And then in November of 2024, the two other districts will have that election. So if you live in one or four, you'll have two votes. If you live in two or three, you'll be voting for the mayor. And this is something that, as you know, uh, we've been asked why. Um, as you know, the San Bernardino Park Elementary School District just had a meeting last night looking into this. The San Bernardino High School District has done it. The community college has done it. Um, we have communities all along us from South City to Half Moon Bay, Millbrae, Belmont, um, Redwood City, et cetera, just to name some. And that is because of the California Voting Rights Act. There's a provision that cities and communities are getting a letter, a lawsuit, and says you're in violation, and if you don't correct it, we are going to sue you. So that's why you see so much that in the news. And so I uh, just wanted to tell you that this November, that is what will be occurring. And you can see there, you can go to sambruno.ca.gov elections for more additional information. Amparan Assemb Assembly Memorial. In February 11th, they held the groundbreaking. And this is something that had been worked on for a long time. And, you know, folks may not know, but between in 1942, between April and October of that year, the former racetrack, which I was taught, was in an internment camp and was utilized for a period of time um, against the Japanese because of World War, the World War and the uh, federal order, executive order that 9066 that was issued by the president. And what I've also found when I was there was a beautiful day, but it was also just the amount of what everybody has done to come together, people that have donated and their time and their monies to have this. What's important is as a third generation lifelong San Bernardino resident, 
I was never taught this in school, but it is a reality of what was here, and it's important that we acknowledge it, and it's important that we remember it. People need to remember. Keep in mind, it's 80 years ago that this occurred. That's not that long ago when you think about it. And it's important that we acknowledge it, we remember it, and we make sure it never happens again. Also, so some developments, YouTube, phase one, the office development. Folks have seen that, whether it's the cranes that you don't always see in San Bruno or the development that's going on, um, the, they're going to retain the two existing office buildings on phase one, and they're going to construct two new buildings with 440,000 square feet of additional office space. And so as you know, they're going to realign Grundy Lane, and they're in uh, current activities that you can see around us. And here is a picture of what is envisioned and what you can see that will be going forward. The Bay Hill specific plan, plan was passed and therefore going forward is the YouTube development in our community. Also another project is the Glenview Terrace, which is at the top of San Bruno Avenue near uh, Glen uh, View. And so over there, uh, they're going to have a redevelopment. It's a 3.2 acre parcel project with 39 residential lots that will be uh, being had. They currently, was at the Planning Commission, they're doing outreach to the community. And I know there are always questions and concerns. And of course, uh, please ask those questions. We want to make sure that you're heard, but we also want to make sure that you get the information correctly, factually, and timely. We've all heard about the former Crestmore High School site, as I know it, 300 Piedmont. That is a project that uh, is going forward. Uh, was, the school was opened in 1962, and it was closed in 1980 due to uh, decline enrollment in our county. And so that has sat there, and there was a 7-Eleven committee that deemed it surplus land in May of 2010. And in 2020, the district asked for proposals for this parcel, this large parcel. And at this time, what has been proposed is a construction of 156 homes, and it's from Summer Hills. Um, and it's also for dedicated uh, land for recreation and open space. And so the city is working with the developer to see what else will bring forward and the particulars, but that is a project that is um, coming underway and you will hear more about. Reimagining Tamp Brand. That is something that um, in my lifetime, I don't know that I ever thought. This is an over 40 acre parcel, it has three owners. They have all sold, and now the properties were acquired by Alexandria. The biggest question, keep in mind the last time this mall was updated was in 2005. <clears throat> I remember going to the opening. I also remember as a kid where there was a whole arcade and only four cinemas. The mall has evolved, but now it has been bought by one owner, and the biggest question I get is, is the mall closing tomorrow at the end of the month? And the answer is no, not now. Alexandria is working with those that are there, but it could be years. Things take time, as we well know, for whether it's zoning or whether it's a proposal. And what they're looking for is could be commercial, retail, and housing. And so we will see what will bring that forward. At 170 Superno Avenue West, <clears throat> there is a proposal. People may know it as a former, former gas station. And so that is coming up as far as a preliminary application right now for that is for a condo proposal, uh, but we won't know more until uh, early summer on that project. Mills Park, people have asked me, so what's happening? It was approved, but nothing's happened. The project uh, received entitlement, as you know, but has not received a building permit, meaning a permit has not been pulled out to move on to that project. Um, there's also uh, other development activity from the Ingball uh, site, which is a former golf range today. People may rem remember it as a junior high school. Uh, they signed a contract and will start the environmental review. There's the Amazon uh, Sky Park project, which was three years ago now, but Amazon owns it. They're considering whether it's a renovation or total rebuild. There is 111 San Bruno Avenue, the old ATC building, which is on 840 San Bruno Avenue. And if you go, we have this website up, sanbruno.ca.gov, development activity. This will give you an opportunity, an idea of where you can go and at your leisure. And if you want to find um, information of what's going on in your community on projects that are upcoming. One specific project, which is the Melody 
uh, Toyota, as we may remember, is at 730, 742 El Camino Real. Under SB 35, the state density bonus development proposal, which was received in uh, September 21, you can see uh, on the screen what it is. It's 136 units, 126 studio and 10 one bedroom. It's 25 parking stalls. Um, and you can see about the bike space. Keep in mind that what this is, is the state of California recently has enacted new housing laws that supersede local regulations. So where we may have had something different, meaning uh, one parking spot per bedroom, which might have been 150 spots in a, in a proposal as such, 25. Um, we could, we had said in the transit corridor plan five stories, but they want six. And that again is under these proposals that the state has done um, to, um, shall we say, increase the housing need in, in the state of California that they don't believe is moving fast enough. And as you know, we have RENA numbers to meet as well. But that is one project simply to explain to you what is coming forward um, under one of those uh, state measures. Housing element. Housing is important. We always talk about it, and it is, is critical. Um, this plan that we're at looking for virtual community meetings, May 4th and May 26th, coming up, 6 to 8. And that is for, uh, we need everybody to be a part of the city's overall general plan. Several uh, engagement efforts, including the series of the webinars, Let's Talk Housing, a fair housing survey, and a listening sessions will occur. So I ask you to please be engaged and um, be involved. Also for affordable housing. The city continues to engage with housing developers to evaluate downtown areas for possible site affordable housing and projects to continue to make it to that level of, of our arena numbers as well as the need that every community has uh, to meet the needs of our community and again to have it so that we have moderate or low income level opportunities for all communities. Public work projects. We have many, and I'll just highlight a few. The Scott Street, the street grade separation, as you remember, you may recall, um, we were talking about that because of the South Linden. Both South City and San Bruno have come together to propose a, a plan uh, for San Bruno to reduce traffic delays by downed gates and improve the flow. Um, and also the public safety. As you know, we've heard sometimes that there's some incidents that happened over at that crossing. So that is going forward. We are getting funding. We have had funding requests from the uh, San Mateo County Transportation Authority, which we've been fortunate to receive two funding mechanisms, and we're going to be asking for more along with South City. And we're going to be going with Alternative 1, which is a rail elevated about 15.5 feet at South Linden Avenue and 2.5 feet at Scott Street as the preferred alternative. And why was that at Scott? That's going to stop the flow of vehicle traffic, but not foot or bicycle traffic. And primarily, if we had gone with the elevated track, as you see at San Bruno Avenue or other locations, that could have taken, they guess, uh, high 20s, 30s, potentially 40 homes from that area would have had to be um, claimed for that expansion of that rate separation. So listening to the community, having meetings and hearings, um, this is what the city of San Bruno has embarked upon. Safe Route to school, Schools is a grant funding through Measure A and City as well. This project is to develop and plan uh, walking, biking, and rolling, rolling safe and more uh, compatible to and from our schools. Uh, members of the public can provide feedback, identify safety concerns with their children by walking and biking to school. I participated and some of the other council members have uh, and it's very interesting when you sit back and you watch and you analyze and bring forward that data of what you've seen on how they walk, how they travel, the, the uh, blind spots, et cetera. Um, walking audit, audits for the schools are in process. And again, you can uh, certainly go to our website and it's uh, safe routes if you want more information. Avenues 3-1, that's a sewer and water replacement main, that's a project. And that's around the Keynes Avenue, El Camino, and San Mateo Avenue, Huntington and San, Mate uh, San Antonio Bike Corridor and Repaving Project. That is going forward. Local road safety plan. That's also through Measure A and city funded as well, which are great. We have this opportunity 
to match and have these funds available to us. Um, and that is for uh, traffic safety for all modes of transportation. Again, it's important that we connect those last miles from our major hubs of transportation, from our train to our BART. And that is just a, what we're embarking upon to bring that uh, more to fruition for this community. COVID-19, obviously that is something that who would have known three years ago? And here we are going fast forward. We've lived with it uh, for about, I guess, 32 years. The good news is for the city of San Bruno, 96.7% of San Bruno residents are vaccinated as of April 24th has been reported. Um, I think we all know, I think when it early started, we wouldn't think of anyone we knew or was affected by this. And then we became that we did. Well, either loved ones, friends, others that uh, um, became hospitalized, unfortunately succumbed to this uh, to COVID-19 over the course of the time. Uh, the city of San Bruno is trying to be, be there and be available and be cognizant of what it is to keep uh, the community safe, the staff safe. But we still encourage people to get tested. And we still have here at City Hall, between the library, we still have testing that can be done. Um, we ask that you still can get vaccinated if you have not. Um, folks that have been vaccinated, that I talked to or helped out, um, they're, they're not going to the hospitals. They're not on ventilators. They have uh, symptoms as, as a flu or a cold. So I, I, I would encourage again all of us to not let it down. Um, it is still here and it is still contagious and we still need to take the proper precautions and, and be smart and be wise. Mental health. Mental health is in the month of May. And that is uh, something that's very important. Uh, it was launched in January of this year uh, by the San Mateo County Mayor's Mental Health Initiative. And that is 16 mayors of this county, San Bruno being one, that have come together with the uh, Board of Supervisor President Don Horsley to say, this is an issue and a concern. And let me just explain. Mental health conditions are one of the most common health conditions worldwide. More than half of the people worldwide within uh, live, work that, let me go again. More than half of the people worldwide live with a mental health condition in their lifetime, half in their lifetime. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a 25% increase in the prevalence of anxiety and depression. And as your mayor and as your neighbor, I feel that I want to tell you that I fall into this category. And I'm telling you this is because I believe it's important for people to be able to say it, talk about it, and not have a stigma attached to it. There are services and there are assistance, and we must always be open to that, but we cannot have the stigma, and we need to ensure that services are available and that folks are taken care of. Also, what it has happen is on our youth. It's been difficult. And it is stated in December, the Surgeon General issued a special advisory to highlight the urgent need to address the nation's youth mental health crisis. That one in four San Mateo County, 11 graders, use alcohol or drugs one or more times in the last 30 days. That almost one out of five in the county, the 11 graders, considered suicide in the last 12 months. This is something we cannot ignore. This is something that I think has challenged us or maybe we've lost somebody. But I think this is something that again, I am so proud of this county and all the mayors coming together to say this is our priority, especially with what has transpired with COVID and everything else that is going on in our world. It is not always easy, but as long as we're here for each other, uh, and provide the services, and it's a priority of this county and this community. And in closing, I want to, um, first of all, as always, thank all of the staff. I want to thank all of the city employees, and being a former one myself, it is something that is so essential and critical. Without what they do, without the service that they provide, our city would not function or operate. Even during COVID times, they showed to work, they did their jobs, and they ensured that the business of the city continued on. 
to our public safety who had to go out there and continue their task, their mission. They did it with flying colors. I'm very proud of all of the staff at all levels and all areas who've come together in these challenging times to make sure it works. You know, it's been difficult, as I alluded earlier, with COVID and with what we've all had to experience and adjust to. Who would have known what Zoom was three years ago? Who would have thought we would all be wearing masks all the time and maybe continue to? But with that, we've also, unfortunately, have lost folks, uh, friends, family, loved ones. Um, and it has been a difficult time. But what I've also been blessed is that this community always comes together. It volunteers, it steps forward, and it cares. It rallies behind a time or a need. When there is other devastations or tragedies we've had in this community, or whether it's COVID and how we were going to overcome it and make sure people were fed and make sure services were delivered. And so I want to thank everybody in this community for those that volunteer, for those that give up their time, or whatever they do give, how they give, that they have given. Their prayers are also never heard either. I will tell you I'm a believer of never lose hope and always keep the faith. And I think this community does that very well. And that's why we're known the city with a heart. I also want to say to those who are going to share in a graduation and be the class of 2022, that I want to congratulate each and every one of you and give you my best wishes as you embark upon a new chapter, a new role in your life going forward. I want to thank you, all of you, for allowing me to serve as your mayor and to represent you in this county. It has been a privilege and a pleasure and together, I look forward to us, you and I, together, continue on and moving the city forward and making a difference that we are all proud of. And I am one who has lived here and I'm proud to call San Bruno my home. And now I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for your time. And for me, I am now off to my former high school, Cappuccino High, to enjoy their spring concert. So with that, thank you and good night.